Hey, what's up? This is another quick video over an episode of a Batman show. This time it's over the Batman. This show follows Bruce in his early years of being Batman, learning to balance his double life and deal with the new breed of villains in Gotham. The movie Batman vs. Dracula takes place in this universe, and I'm totally working on that video and not putting it off and doing other videos. Anyway, this episode follows Batman facing off against Killer Croc, and it stood out to me for two reasons. The first one being the visuals of flooded Gotham and the underground network of pipes and utility stations. The second reason, and the one that caught me off guard, was the legend Ron Perlman voicing Croc with a heavy Cajun accent. Tens of thousands of lives could be lost. And I'll shed a crocodile tear for each and every one. Ron needs no introduction, but to give a quick rundown, Ron Perlman has done it all, from playing Hellboy in Hellboy Blood and Iron, which I have a video on and you should go check out after this one, to being Clay in Sons of Anarchy. Pussy. Sweet, holy pussy. He has over 270 credited roles on IMDb, so chances are he's been in something you've seen. Sweet pussy! Accept me! Really? <laughs> Reno Romano voices Batman, and he's been in a lot of animated shows, but he's also the voice of Luis from Resident Evil 4. We open on Gotham at night, where we follow Croc as he makes his way from the harbor to downtown. We see a group of thieves making their escape when they're interrupted by Croc. Boys, I'm a whole different breed of animal. Every time Croc is on scene, he chews the whole scene, pun intended. The Cajun twist to the character is a unique choice to say the least, and later we hear from one of the goons that nobody really knows where Croc's from. After Croc hires the robbers, we get the opening theme. There's even a segment that shows off the video game inventory screen of toys available for purchase at your local Target today. We open the episode on Bruce who's looking over the recent robberies when he sees Alfred collecting the evidence from the Batman cases. Since the show takes place in the first few years of Batman, it's nice seeing the beginning of what would become his collection of memorabilia. And while there's no giant penny, we see the masks from the Penguin episode and the Joker's Jack in the Box. Even though we know these things will never leave the cave, Alfred's preserving them for a potential Batman museum after people come to accept the Batman as their protector. I've chosen to archive them. A private museum, if you will. After all, the Batman may someday enjoy a more favorable place in society's view. After Bruce says he wouldn't hold his breath on the museum idea, it gives him another idea on the recent robberies. This transitions to Batman on the docks and his new bat boat available for purchase at your local Target today. While surveying the skyline, he sees a boat robbery in progress, and after making his way to the dock, a budget-friendly fight breaks out off-screen and we see Croc studying his new prey. This is when Ron Perlman steals yet another scene and introduces himself to Batman. My daddy used to say, you want something done right. Best to do it yourself. We see just how strong Croc is when him and Batman connect fists and it sends the Batman flying back. This lets Croc Goldberg spear Bruce off the side of the boat and put so many kids in a state of panic when we see Croc drag Bruce to the bottom of the harbor, almost drowning him. <laughs> After the team make their getaway, we see Croc's lair, which is some utility area with pipes and bricks as far as the eye can see. I've always found these locations to be unsettling, somewhere that was built by people and now abandoned, but still in use by the city. It's the same feeling I get when looking at abandoned subway tunnels or other utility spaces. We hear Croc's team starting to get annoyed with Croc, who is keeping them in the sewer surrounded by poo, but we'll get more into that later. We hear Croc's plan to flood downtown Gotham and turn it to his own personal swamp. And while he does use the floods to rob banks, it almost seems like his grand plan is to just make a place he can chill and the money is just a benefit. This time tomorrow, the tops of skyscrapers will be our lily pads and downtown Gotham will be our oyster. We cut to Bruce in the Batcave as he learns about downtown getting flooded and three bank alarms going off at the same time. Three bank alarms in Gotham's waterlogged financial district? Your amphibious acquaintance? We then get the thing I remember this episode for all these years later when we see flooded Gotham and Croc and company swimming out of the bank with gold bars. Underwater cities are just so atmospheric, seeing places empty and cars thrown around while the feeling of silk and water surrounds everything. Seeing what was a moment of destruction preserved in time, only being moved by gentle currents and schools of fish. Croc and crew are making their escape on jet skis, but this is interrupted when Batman shows up, and after playing a game of Cajun-style chicken, a chase 
breaks out between Kronk and Batman. How about a little game of chicken? Cajun style. After Batman is knocked off his jet ski, Croc dips, leaving Batman to the lead henchman. This ends about how you'd expect it to, with the henchman getting hogtied to the statue. After interrogating the goon, we hear about how Croc is new in town, and he's planning to flood Gotham and make it his own swamp. Croc's story. Spill it. <laughs> he's ex-military, I think. Tack your shot down, you broke like a keg of beer! Batman finds Croc's layers and his plans, and after hearing the what from the goon, we hear the how from Croc. But I did some thinking. If you reverse the pumps, they draw water in from the bay, filling the canals. Croc gives his villain speech and then leaves Batman to his pet crocodiles, and I'm left wondering, is this a Pluto goofy thing or what? I mean, Killer Croc, crocodiles, it makes sense, but how does he communicate with them? And couldn't he just go to the zoo and use the crocodiles to do crime for him? Like the episode of the show with the penguin? None of this matters because Bruce just kills them anyway, but it's shit like this that keeps me up at night. We cut to Croc and crew at the pumping station, and while I don't have a degree in civil engineering, I question the ability to just reverse the flow of a drain pipe. The whole point is to move water from where people are to somewhere people aren't. And what point is there in reversing it? It's like running your house gutters back into your living room. Anyway, I got a bit off track there, so back to the episode. We see Croc and crew reversing the flow of the drains, which is interrupted by Batman. And after taking out the side goons, Batman starts turning the wheel, but is slipping in poo. You are peskier than a fly in a... <laughs> So they never actually exactly say what it is, so I guess it could be mud, but they're in the sewers, so that's definitely shit they're covered in. A fight breaks out over the wheel between the croc and the bat, with them trading places spinning the wheel. This ends when croc loses a tooth on the wheel and then proceeds to try and drown Bruce like he did earlier in the episode. This is when Batman realizes how he can defeat croc by using his own territory against them. A dry little spot to catch my breath between heists. Your amphibious acquaintance? Heists. Amphibious and heists. Amphibious. Dry little spot, dry little spot to catch. Holy pussy. Am, 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 am. Heists. Acquaintance? Dry little spot, dry little spot. Dry little spot. I know Batman has a no-killing rule, but he really beats the shit out of Croc before drowning him. Of course, Batman does some CPR, but it's still quite a sight seeing Croc reaching out of the water trying to breathe and Batman holding him under. This episode ends with Croc and crew chained up and Alfred getting a new addition to the Batman Museum. I shall archive this right away, sir. While Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond are talked about more, the Batman was unique in the fact that it was early on in Bruce's time as Batman. There's also a surprisingly large amount of A-list talent that would voice characters like Ron Perlman in this episode or Adam West as the mayor in another. This show would also have storylines that would build up between episodes, like this series Clayface starting as a police officer before being kidnapped by the Joker and transformed. While not being my favorite Batman iteration out there, it's far from the worst. Batman the Animated Series series was the first, and Batman Beyond was the neon soaked in, leaving the Batman to be the awkward middle child everyone would leave in the dust. Anyway, I have to get back to the Batman vs. Dracula video, so until next time, later. Oh, baby. <laughs>